Hi everybody and welcome to SA Rugby. We've got Mark Yohain as always. Hey Mark, how are you doing? Good, Kev, good. Rugby's back. Finally, we've been chatting for the last two, two and a half months about New Zealand, Australia, South African players overseas. Finally to say we're going to have a game in South Africa this Saturday. It's the Vodacom Fan Day. It's similar to the Super Heroes Day that was in Soweto early in the year. The only difference is different teams playing uh, each other. The Lions will play against the Stormers. That's the late game. And the Bulls will play against the Sharks. Um, Jake White, we'll finally see what he's been doing behind closed doors for the last three months. I'm sure that team was taking contact. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt about that. Um, look, it's great that, that rugby's back. It, we should point out that this is just a run out for the guys and more of an exhibition style. It doesn't count towards anything. It's it counts towards no points. It does give the broadcaster a couple of games on Saturday. It's the, uh, the announcement that, as you said, rugby is back in South Africa officially. Uh, it's more to promote the virtues of the game. Uh, Funny enough, the Soweto, the, the, the superhero day, when they'd been in training for a while, was, was very competitive and the, the scores were quite close. I'm expecting this one to be a lot more free-flowing, given that these guys know they're going into a competition where they have to play each other in the next fortnight. That will go double round through till the 16th of January. So hopefully they will be getting the cobwebs off, throwing that ball around, kind of playing for tries and just getting people excited about the quality of player in South Africa um, and it will it will speak to the testament of how much depth there is in the local game and I'm expecting high scoring games uh, we chatted just before we came uh, onto the show who do you think is going to win we'll toss a coin you know I, I just think the Lions and the Bulls have been training at altitude for the last three months and the boys from the coast are going up there in the next couple of days and those lunch could take a beating on early Saturday evening and late Saturday afternoon yeah, I think so, Mark. It, um, you're probably right with that. I just hope, because if you look at the NFL, who had no uh, pr uh, training camp, really, or any contact games or exhibition games, they're finding out now in their runouts that they've never seen so many injuries in terms of the guys that are going down. Yeah, I think conditioning will be a, a, a huge factor, because if again, if you go back to New Zealand and the UK, and they were kind of like, and, and, and Ireland and Wales, they set the standard of how it should be done but they were allowed to have contact training for best part of six weeks before they started their season uh, where we pretty much had it for three weeks yeah officially you know and uh, that's why I say nothing would surprise me if the boys up north have been in good contact training behind closed doors but it's um, yeah I don't people need to just see this game for what it is it's showcasing the talent it's another glorified trial for Jacques Ninaba and Rassi Erasmus to see outside of their World Cup winners what's on show and how these World Cup winners are going to respond to the challenge in South Africa. Yeah. Um, then we, we look at the green and gold, the Springbok green against the Springbok gold, the next week, a weekend in, at uh, Newlands in Cape Town, where the box was supposed to play Scotland in their final ever test match at uh, Newlands. This will be like a goodbye to the old, the old lady of, of Rugby Stadium in, in South Africa. And interesting about that is the draft pick where They've identified uh, 60 players. Uh, Dion Davids and Sticks will coach the one side. Um, Jock uh, will be in charge of the other side. And uh, um, well, Sticks is one side, and, and, and Dion Davids the other side. And uh, Jock and, and Rassi will oversee the thing. And it's going to be a schoolyard pick where they, I pick one, you pick one. And yeah. it's, it's again showcasing the talent that's there. Rassi has said he just wants players to express themselves, to show the selectors kind of what they've been doing over the last three months in terms of fitness. And then we get into the real stuff. The week after that, October the 10th, is where we start a seven-team uh, Curry Cup competition that runs through to the 16th of Jan. But the four Super Rugby franchises, will, all their players will be available for the first four weeks of that competition, the first four rounds. The points that are, are gained from that, just between those four franchises, will go towards a domestic Super Rugby winner, as you've had in Australia and New Zealand. So lots to look forward to South African-wise over the next three weeks. It's a bit, it's, it's, it's a bit sad that we're, we're, we're saying goodbye to a, the grand old lady of, of, of rugby stadiums in, in, in South Africa with, with that type of game. Not that, I mean, not that we're not hungry for rugby, but um, it's, it's uh, I mean, what, do, you, do you have any special memories from that, from that stadium that uh, you'd like to share? Yeah, Jess, I kind of wrote about it uh, last week. I think 
one of one of my most special memories was being there as an eight year old, and Western Province played against uh, Western Province played against the All Blacks, 1976. That gives away my age. And Robbie Blair, who was this iconic figure for me, the fluff, left footed, kicked everything wherever he went in his career. I followed that team, even so when he came back and played one last season as a, as an old man, he played at Fundestel. I followed them for a year, <laughs> and he had missed eight. Uh, eight penalties in the game and when I finally got to meet him a couple of years ago I asked him about that and he said that they had the All Blacks just before kickoff had asked for the Super Springbok ball to be flattened because they didn't like the ball as being as hard as that and his whole career said he had never kicked a ball that flat and it spooked him the whole game and uh, but then he nailed an 80th minute sideline conversion his second successful kick of the game for the for the All Blacks to be beaten 12-11 and that day in front of 50,000 people at Newlands Province beating the All Blacks, Mornay Duplessis playing a blinder, Chris Pope being superb, the kick from Blair. I, was, I fell in love with the stadium, fell in love with Province, and kind of fell in love with South African rugby. So as a schoolboy, that was one of my great memories. Uh, from a personal note, any time the All Blacks played against uh, South Africa, and um, you know, uh, the first one I went with my dad and my brother when I was eight, and the last match, 25-24 in 2017, went with Ollie, my son, and kind of experienced that in the stand. So, from a fan perspective, those were the two that really stand out for me. Professionally, every time the Springboks won, it was a highlight. Yeah. For me, it had to be 97 when the, the Lions were here. And uh, me and my brother uh, watched, watched the game. Great tickets for the game. Um, and, the, and the crowd, the atmosphere. It was my first international at, uh, at Newlands. And that was massive. Eh? To have the Lions, who were underdogs going into that game against the Springboks, playing superbly, the Matt Dawson dummy, uh, yeah. going over and scoring. Scott Gibbs just being a monster, as he was all series. And then having the Lions supporters there as well. I yeah. think wherever you bring those, that sea of red in, it creates an atmosphere that's unlike anything in the world when it comes to a rugby game. Yeah, I remember going out after that match, and, there, and it was raining that day. And, uh, raining red. <laughs> raining red. And the streets there, it was just such an eerie... It was, the pubs were quiet, the, the bars were quiet. It was just... Um, but, but at the stadium, it was a special day. I'll never forget it. Yeah, and then let's not forget it. Every single uh, Super Rugby Curry Cup and Test match at that SA Rugby magazine suite was always a special day. <laughs> a special night into the early hours of the morning. It certainly was. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to, to kind of see the talent on show uh, and to see how these guys adapt to this this trial type concept where you may start in the D team and end up in the A team. But I like the innovation that's again been shown by Rassi and by Jacques. It's something that we haven't seen in the past, pre them. And, and again, you know, we, we put New Zealand on the pedestal in this country, we put Australia to a degree, England. Let's also acknowledge when our guys are doing something that's very innovative and in a way giving us a north-south game, but making sure that there's no predetermined favourites because of the quality of play in the north or the play in the south. Well, this brings me to my next question. This, this green and gold game, how much, how much stock can someone that's on the peripheral of, of, the bo of box selection, can, they, can, can a good performance in that game take them over the line? Definitely. I think what they are looking at, he also knows what he's got. Those World Cup winners who are playing overseas and uh, the seasoned veterans who are in the system. This is a wonderful opportunity for a couple, I'd say probably five or six youngsters to push for inclusion in that rugby championship squad if they do go. Because of the size of it. Because of it's 45 players that would go. Yeah. And uh, my understanding is if, if it does go ahead in Australia, as, as they put it out there, it could be that you play twice a week. Mm. So there would be matched game time opportunities as well. So everything to play for without a doubt. And uh, with a season that's just been as crazy as this one, there is no form to go with. The only form is what we've seen from the UK and from the French leagues. Yeah. Um, and those players will be available. It just depends again on how seriously they want to take the defence of the rugby championship in these extraordinary circumstances, or do they use it as a feeder, uh, a tournament, and expose blokes on the periphery to play in Australia and New Zealand overseas and creating a kind of World Cup type atmosphere. And you may feel in the long run that's far more beneficial than taking his best team underdone and they get done and people say, what have you got gained from the tournament? <laughs>